Hi, today's strategy uses a box breakout indicator on the one minute time frame for a scalping trading style. The strategy is very simple. We will consider the one minute time frame. Then we define a box of five candles corresponding to a five minutes duration or one candle on the higher time frame, which is the five minutes. The box shows the price range, meaning the maximum high and the minimum low of the selected five minutes window. Then in the next five minutes, we will check if we have a breakout or a candle closing above or below the box limits. If a breakout is identified, we enter a trade in the same direction of the breakout. In this example, we have a long setup. The breakout is happening in the up direction. So we enter a buying position and the stop loss is set at the low of the breakout candle, while the take profit is set using a take profit stop loss ratio of around two, for example. So now we will code this strategy in Python backtested on the Euro US dollar data for around two years, and then we will go through the results. If you are a fan of coding and backtesting strategies, the Python code is available for download for free from the link in the description of this video. So you can download it also with the data files and run the backtest from your side and maybe experiment by changing some of the parameters. For the sake of completeness, this strategy is not original mine, I came across this box approach while exploring the fair value gap trading strategies and it caught my attention. I thought it was worth conducting a small experiment to see its potential. So this is our Jupyter notebook file. This is the file that we will be able to download with the uh, data files from the link in the description if you are interested in the coding part. In the first cell, we are importing pandas and pandas technical analysis because we are going to use some technical indicators later on if needed. You might want to try adding the EMA or moving averages and so on to filter trades by trending market. So here we're just loading the CSV file. So as you can see, we're using the one minute time frame between 2023 and 2025. So we have two years of data. Um, doing some data cleaning, the GMT time column, discarding candles where the volume is equal to zero. So we have no trading volume and then resetting the index. And this is how the uh, data frame is going to look like. So we have the GMT time column, the open, high, low, close and the volume. Then we're going to define a new column called box underscore start. And it's going to be uh, the minutes in the GMT time modulus five. So when the uh, minutes modulus five is equal to zero, it means every five minutes, we're going to uh, assign the integer one to the, uh, to the value of that particular row. So I'm going to run this again to make sure that it's working and we're printing the uh, data frame head 15 rows. And as you can see, so this is minutes zero, we have a one, so that's the uh, beginning of a five minutes candle. So one, two, three, four, five, then the beginning of the next five minutes candle is here. And as you can see, it's marked one. The rest of the rows are marked zero and so on. So that's going to be zero, five minutes, 10, 15, and so on. Then we're going to define two columns, the maximum of the box and the minimum of the box. Therefore, we're going to check for the uh, maximum among the high of the last five candles. Also the low, the minimum of the low within the window of the last five candles. So every five candles, we're checking for the maximum high and the minimum low, provided that these five minutes windows are starting at the uh, candles where we have, or the rows where we have a multiple of five in order of minutes. So these are the beginning of five minutes windows. In case you are wondering about this shift, shift one, it's just to discard taking into account the current candle because the rolling window considers the current candle and the other four previous candles. So we don't want this. We want the previous five candles discarding the current candle. So this is why we shifted by one. And just to verify that things are working as intended, let's check, for example, this row. So we have a one and the maximum is 1.0938 and the maximum of the highs here is 1.0938. So that's the highest value within the window of the previous five candles. The minimum, actually, the minimum of the box, 1.07898. So that's going to be in the low, 7898, and it's this one. So that's true. It's the lowest value in the five candles window that we considered just before this particular candle or this particular row. Now, since I want to reason in boxes, so if this is a box, these five candles are a box. In the coming box, these the coming five candles, I just want to consider the minimum and the maximum defined 
here. I don't want to follow a sliding window approach. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to define the candles related to the upper time frame candle. And the upper time frame candle is defined only by these five candles. So we don't want this sliding window approach. In this case, I'm going to empty the maximum box and the minimum box columns for the rows where we have zero here, where it's not a box start, just to keep these two values and these two values. We're just going to keep the maximum and the minimum measured at the beginning of the candle, of the five minutes candle. So this is going to be at the multiples of five minutes rows. And after we do this, we're going to forward fill the box with these two values. So the whole box is going to keep the same minimum and maximum. And this is how we're going to test if we have a breakout, if we have a closing price above the maximum or below the minimum. And all of this is done here. So we're going to uh, check if the box start is equal to zero, then for maximum box and minimum box, it's equal to none. So we're discarding these values where we don't have one here. So the maximum and the minimum are going to be none. And this is where we're going to use the uh, forward fill, fill an A, uh, using the forward fill with the maximum box and the minimum box columns. And we can run this one and we display again the data frame or a slice of the data frame. You can see that we have the same maximum and minimum for the whole box setup. Then we have a new maximum and minimum for the new box and so on. Now the break signal is easy to define. It's just where we have a closing price above the maximum of the box. In this case, we have um, a one or the integer, which is by default equal to one times two. So that's a signal equal to two in the bullish direction. And if it's below, if the closing price is below the minimum box, then in this case, we return one. So that's a bearish direction signal. So we have either two or one or zero by default. And this is what we will be getting. We have a slice, again, a slice of the data frame. As you can see, we have a break signal here. That's one in the bearish direction, which means that the closing price of this candle is lower than the minimum. So we have 07934, 07944. So this is where this candle broke below the box defined by the previous maximum and minimum. And same here, we have a bearish uh, signal, consecutive bearish signals. It seems that this is a strong breakout. All the candles are closing below the previous uh, minimum of, uh, of the box. This is a bullish signal that's equal to two, followed by another bullish. So these candles are breaking above the maximum of the uh, defined box. I added this cell to remove the other redundant occurrences of signals within the same block of five candles, which means that in this case, if we have three bullish signals within the same block, only the first one is taken into account or kept for trading. The reason is because we need to catch the uh, signal as early as possible. Even if the other candles are closing below the minimum or above the maximum of the box limits, we don't want to enter the trades because the signal already happened and we're probably going to catch a small retracement or it's not going to be a profitable risk to reward ratio. So for this, we're just keeping the, uh, the first one, the first occurrence of recurrent signals. You don't have to take this into account. You can experiment with or without this cell, but just keep in mind that this is one way of uh, approaching things and it might be worth some investigation. Now we can apply uh, value counts on the signals and we can see that we have a balanced number of signals in the up and the down direction, which is a good sign. The market is balanced, the signals are balanced and the code is working properly. So now we can visualize these uh, signals on a chart. So I'm taking just a small slice of the data and uh, we're going to place those purple points above and below the candles. So if the purple point is above the candle, it means that we have a breakout in the down direction. That's a bearish signal. And in the opposite direction, if the purple point is below the candle, it means we have a bullish uh, breakout. So a bullish direction of the signal. And this is a different slice of the data. As we can see, we have purple points below and above uh, the candles. So I'm going to change it once more, make things a bit zoomed in. So we have uh, purple points below the candles and we can see that this candle closed above the uh, previous five candles high so it's breaking above a certain box if we draw a box right here 
and then it announces an upward movement. So this is the perfect signal. We have this box here, and then we have a breakout, and then after the breakout, we have a small retracement and the price continued up. But there's only one way to find out how good this indicator is. We're going to backtest it. So I'm going to backtest it in a very simple way. We will be using the backtesting.py library as usual. And we're defining the uh, signal, which is the break signal. And the size of the trades is 90% uh, actually of the equity for now. And the take profit stop loss ratio is two. I didn't apply any optimization. I'm just choosing these random numbers to uh, carry out this first backtest. Then in the next function, we're going to check if we have a bullish signal. So it's equal to two and we don't have any open position on the market. We define the current low, the current close, the stop loss, which is equal to the current low. This is where we place our stop loss. And the take profit, it's equal to the distance of the stop loss times the uh, take profit stop loss ratio, which is two in this case. In the opposite direction, if we have a bearish signal, we uh, open a sell position with the uh, stop loss and the take profit, taking the stop loss as the current high and the take profit that is equal to the current close minus the uh, take profit stop loss ratio times the distance of the stop loss. So this is what we have just explained at the beginning of the video describing the strategy. So it's all in here in the coding part. As you may have noticed, I've added a bit of uh, conditions here because sometimes if we add the spread, we uh, and since we are working on the minutes time frame, we have the risk of a take profit that is equal to the closing price, for example, or to the current opening price of the um, of the trade. So we always need to have the take profit below the closing price below the stop loss condition. This is for bearish trading uh, positions. In the opposite for the bullish trades, we need to have the take profit above the closing price, above the stop loss. Uh, and this condition is crucial because otherwise the uh, back trading strategy will return an error and it will not continue the back test. So we're not going to uh, activate these yet because the spread threshold for now is set to zero. We're going to carry out a first back test and then we will go back to these parameters later on. So taking the data frame as input data, the strategy that we have just defined, the cash of 50,000 and the margin of 105. So that's a leverage one to five. It's not much. This is what we have. We have 67% in returns after two years of trading. The buy and hold returns percentage is minus 4.8. The maximum drawdown is minus 20%, and that's a lot. So this is kind of risky as a strategy. But remember that we also are trading with 90% of the equity. So if I decrease this to, let's say, 5% of the current account, which is a standard in trading, obviously we decrease the um, returns, the total returns in two years. So that's more realistic somehow. We have 3.23%. I remember this is a scalping strategy. The number of trades is huge. That's 51,000. So statistically, this is sound. This is good. Uh, we don't have any uncertainty on the result. A winning trade, a win rate of 34%. But also the, um, um, the maximum drawdown is only minus 1.15%. So that's really good. It's safe. We don't have a big drawdown because we are trading with small quantities and so on. Now we can plot these results. So this is a lot of trades to show. So we're not going to be able to zoom in and uh, check each of the trades and what's happening in details because this is more than 50,000 trades and it's going to jam my, uh, my system. But the most important things I wanted to show you is this increasing equity curve, okay? So this is what I was looking for on the scalping systems, something that keeps going up. Of course, you have those drawdown periods and this is the maximum drawdown, but the slope is always on the positive side. If you want to just have more fun, you can increase the percentage with which you are uh, trading. So again, trading with 99%, uh, so almost the whole set of the equity, all the money that you have. We're going to run the test again. We can increase the margin or decrease it and so on. That's not really realistic. We usually trade maximum with 5% of the equity and five up to five to 10 as a margin, I would say. But as maximum return, expect 75% if you go crazy gambling on this strategy. But there's a big issue. We haven't used commissions. We didn't consider 
uh, the uh, spread. And this is where we see the flow in trying to build a scalping system. Usually scalping systems, they are very, very uh, short in range of trades. You open and you close the trade within few pips, and that's not enough to cover the fees and the spread distance. And this is why any value of standard spread, this commission is barely considering the spread on Euro US dollar as advised by the backtesting.py documentation. I'm going to run the backtest again. And as you can see, so now we have this error I was telling you about. Let's activate the conditions here. So we're just going to add the spread commission here. So only the trades that fulfill these conditions are going to be opened for the backtest. And in this case, we wiped out the account. Let's try in a more realistic scenario. So we're not trading, no one trades with 100% of their equity. Let's go for 2% of the equity and run the backtest again. So this is as safe as we can go. And we have a minus 22% uh, in return. So that's consistently losing uh, strategy. We have a maximum drawdown of minus 22% and so on. I can plot this to show you the equity curve. It looks like it's consistently losing. So we are on the negative side. The equity is constantly decreasing. Now, does this mean that the uh, strategy is not good? Well, I wouldn't say that the whole concept or the whole approach is not good. The indicator itself is good. The proof is that when you remove the threshold of the spread, and we remove the fees and so on, we have a constantly positive uh, and winning trade. It means that it kind of predicting and giving you an edge or a certain uh, prediction probability on the future of the market movement. And it's working well, actually, but only it doesn't cover on this time frame. it will not cover for the fees, it will not cover for the spread and so on. Maybe on a different time frame, it would be more tradable, more feasible, but as explained here, and as I have seen it on the video explaining the strategy, it wouldn't work on the one minute time frame. So let me know in the comments if you would like this strategy to be further developed and maybe improved on different time frames. And don't forget to share any ideas that might be interesting to apply in this case. Let me know what you think about this, the indicator, the strategy, and don't forget that we have a lot to add on the trade management part, we just used a very simple approach here. Maybe it's the approach that's compensating and making the strategy lose and uh, covering up for the uh, positive effect of the indicator. So that will be it for today. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you for staying that long. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.